this section on creating data visualizations that are used to show the distribution of your data, we've started with the histogram and the pyramid chart, both of which are essentially bar charts in which you aggregate your data. Now we're gonna start talking about chart types in which we show individual data points. And to help us start this subsection, I've asked Klaus Wilke, who's a professor at the University of Texas, Austin, and author of the book, Fundamentals of Data Visualization, to talk about the strip chart. So I'm gonna turn it over to Klaus so you can learn more about this chart type. Hey John, thanks for having me. So strip charts are a great tool to compare distributions of numerical values across different categories. So that's a similar problem as say, box or violin plots though the display is quite a bit different. Uh, so May, let's come up with a simple example. Let's say we're training weightlifters. Uh, so we're interested in how much weight they can lift. And let's say we have two different training programs. So five weightlifters are doing one training program and five are doing a different training program. And then at the end, they all can lift a certain amount of weight. And so you could display this as a box plot. So for five weightlifters, you'd draw a box plot and for the other five lifters on the different program you draw a box plot. Um, but that might seem strange, you only have five data points for each category and so why not just show the data, all the data. And so you could just vertically align those five points, right? So each weightlifter lifts a certain amount of weight, that's one point for weight, per weightlifter, one training program, another training program and then if the points are vertically shifted, then you might see, okay, this training program is better than this other training program. So what do we have to think about when we make these types of plots, strip charts? The, the main point is really that there cannot be too many data points. So it works great if you have a small number of data points, like in this example I just made up, you have five data points here, five data points there, that works great. If we had 10,000 data points in each category, then it would be problematic. Then the points would all be on top of each other and you wouldn't really see anything anymore. There's, there's one way to help with that where you can spread them out a bit, that's called jittering. So you horizontally randomly spread the points out um, and you still arrange them vertically based on their value. And that's good for intermediate numbers of points. So maybe if you have between 20 and 100 points, that works well. And if you go beyond, say, 100, 200 points per category, probably the strip chart is not the best option. And at that point, using a box plot or violin plot or something like that is probably better. So let's consider one particular example. So this is an example where we're looking at temperatures over, over the, an entire year. So these are temperatures in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we have mean temperature values for each day in the year, so 365 days, and we arrange it by month. So you can imagine January is kind of cold, December is kind of cold, July is uh, rather warm in comparison. So what we have here is along the x-axis we have the month, along the y-axis we have the mean temperature, so the mean daily temperature on average, what was the temperature that day, and so each dot gives you the temperature for one particular day. So if we go all the way over to December, the lowest temperature is at the very bottom. That was the coldest day in December and then the highest temperature, uh, which is maybe around uh, 35 or so Fahrenheit. So for those of you not familiar with Fahrenheit, 32 degree Fahrenheit is freezing. So 35 Fahrenheit is still very cold. So that's the highest temperature in, in December versus say, if we look in July, the lowest temperature was maybe 55 and the highest temperature was in the 80s. So, so those are relatively warm days. And so what do you see? So we have about 30 temperatures per day. So that's too much to just arrange them all vertically on one line, but by just spreading them out a little bit, it works. And so we see very well both how much variation there is within a month, right? Every month in the summer and in the winter has relatively cold days and relatively warm days, but we can also see overall the shift in temperatures from one month to the next. Thanks. And thanks Klaus for that great review of the strip chart. 
I think it's a great chart type. It can not only be used to show distributions in your data, but also other elements of your data. And I talk about it a little bit more in my book. So come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about more graph types in which we're going to show individual data points to get at that aspect of the distribution of your data. So I'll see you then.